गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू द लाइव टूडे हेलो 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 एवरी वन प्लेजेंट्रीज आर एक्सचेंज एंड आई थिंक टॉपिक्स अपने ऊपर देख ही लिया है टूडे इज वन मोर रूल एंड दिस इज बिकॉज यस्टरडे देर वर अ लॉट मेनी पीपल हेलो शिवम हाउ हाउ आर यू देर वर अ लॉट एंड लॉट मेनी कैंडिडेट्स दो वर आस्किंग मी अबाउट रूल सिक्स सो आई थॉट एंटी कॉल रेक्स कैप्टन स्टेस बस्टर हाई ब्रदर हाउ यू so today's rule uh, today i decided to cover rule number 6 because uh, this is actually one rule which you can if you want you can actually apply it with a lot of practicality in all given situations furthermore there was a lot of demand yesterday from lot many candidates those who wanted me in particular to cover this rule in case you have any questions else otherwise related to rule 6 uh, or related to call regs feel free to shoot them towards the end and i'll try if i can answer if i am not able to answer i'll ask you guys to answer or perhaps go back to the books find out the answer for you guys and give it to you i'll try my best but i cannot promise rules of the road is something which is which needs to be perfected with years of experience and i am not perfect but i know i know my rules i would say pretty well sam se pehle call rex hua कौन सा सेमेस्टर कोई एग्जाम आने वाला है इट इज जस्ट अ कोइंसिडेंस एनीवे सेड एंड डन लेट्स स्टार्ट विद रूल नंबर सिक्स विच इज सेफ स्पीड नाउ वी डोंट हैव टू स्ट्रेस आउट टू मच इनटू टू थ्योरी ऑफ द रूल बिकॉज सेफ स्पीड इज समथिंग व्हिच इज इन आर एट आर बैक ऑफ आर माइंड फ्रॉम डे वन रीजन बींग जब आप रोड पे चल रहे होते हैं वेन यू आर वॉकिंग ऑन अ रोड if you are trying to run or if you are trying to ride a two wheeler if you are trying to drive a car whatever is written in rule 6 you are passively doing it whether you are a layman whether you are a seafarer or whether you are a person who is a uh, who is a, uh, a driving enthusiast or a you know two wheeler enthusiast so safe speed is something jiske sath hum inborn paida hote hain reason being it's a threat mechanism which keeps us safe as a human being for example if it is raining you are out on the road trying to catch a bus and you start to run you are not going to run at like a full go or you won't take a full acceleration because back of your mind you know that the road is slippery so there are many factors which decides how fast you are going to run isn't it guys you are going to see you know kahin aage pani ka puddle to nahi hai is it how slippery the surface is what kind of surface is is there traffic around you how far can you see all this thing you actively think and then you act accordingly likewise when you are driving a two wheeler or a four wheeler on the road what speed you are going to drive what is fast for you what is slow for you everything is relative depends what kind of road road it is what kind of traffic you have what kind of visibility is there what kind of brake pads you have high performance sports performance what kind of tires age of tires material of tires performance of your car acceleration power blah 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 so all these things we are we have always been doing for donkey years safe speed is something which we, the perception of which is always there in our mind ever since we come not even humans even animals they carry the perception of safe speed <laughs> farz kijiye agar aapke piche koi bhag raha hai aur wo chakku leke bhag raha hai he is trying to kill you how fast can you run vis a vis how fast you can normally run so that's what safe speed is safe speed is no number it is relative to where you are what you are trying to do traffic visibility equipments which you have at your disposal if you have like the best marine radar in the world which can pick every boat every traffic uh, uh, in the vicinity with perfection you might go a knot or two extra vis a vis to a radar which you know for sure the performance is not the best and the visibility is not very good it's moderate so depends so coming to the rules per se like i gave you a very example i'll give you a very simple example you go out from your mohalla road you start with your two wheeler aap shuru mein kya speed rakhte hain jab when you are within the vicinity of your mohalla or your colony 10 20 km per hour then as you come out of the gated community you look left and right and you see oh open stretch of road fuck good i'm going to go take a left and then you start to pick up how fast you pick up it all depends if the if there is open stretch of road you might you might try to put pedal to the flow if you have a bus or other vehicle in and around you or somebody trying to cross the road you might allow them to cross the road first then you pick up likewise and especially you know the roads you know that if there are if there is a pit hole if there is a if 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 there is some work in progress in and around the road then you know 
that you cannot take off until you have cleared that patch or if you know there is a bent ahead then you might slow down and then pick up again so exactly on the same concept is ex is is the foundation of safe speed guys and like i say every rule every word is important coming to rule 6 uh, uh, i have already shared this if you have seen this live before then you know the short form if you have not if you are new i'll share that short form with you i have made a short form i have not made it my batchmates they made made it or somebody else made it i just got it through them i'll tell you how to easily remember the six points which you have in the rules by by with the help of a uh, short form but we'll come back to it later and please don't mind the short form don't take it ke decent kyun nahi just jaisa bana banaya mila main aapko bata dunga now starting with rule 6 rule 6 is every vessel now again the important word here is if you remember if you were there in my live yesterday rule 19 we said that every vessel shall proceed with the safe speed adjusted to the prevailing circumstances a power driven vessel must have her engines stand by for uh, must have her engines ready for immediate maneuver now here again the word is every vessel so there is no exemption there is no exemption for nuc there is no uh, uh, exemption for ram the rule does not say the situation might make it it's a different case altogether but the rule says every vessel shall at all times proceed at a safe speed now here lies your answer yesterday somebody asked me what if a uh, ram vessel is overtaking me a ram vessel knows her 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 uh, or a cbd knows the fact very well that they are not in the best condition to alter their course they might be restricted because of the nature of the work or because of the draft then why are they doing such excess speeds because the rule also says this is all law this is not ideally you are supposed to stay clear as a power driven vessel but tomorrow if a collision takes place then the court of law is definitely going to ask the master of that ship that you were aware of your of the fact that you cannot alter the course why were you doing such high speeds so remember every vessel shall at all times and why it says all times means that doesn't mean that in last 5 minutes you came down to safe speed or you started to reduce and you said oh i was doing safe speed just before the collision and just because you, because you end up in a collision that doesn't mean you were not doing safe speed a collision can also be because you were not keeping a proper lookout though your speed was safe for example maybe i'm maneuvering only at two knots but what if me and my entire bridge team goes off to sleep and there is a collision so the collision has not taken place because i was not doing safe speed so it, the rule says every vessel shall at all times means at all times it doesn't matter 5 minute pehle ya 10 minute pehle ya 10 minute baad 5 minute pehle at all times you must maintain a safe speed every vessel without an exception shall proceed at all times at a safe speed so that she can take a proper and effective action now what do we mean by proper and effective action to avoid collision now when do we take any action when does coal coal rex come into picture coal rex come into picture when there is a risk of collision if there is no risk of collision there is no need for you to go about altering a course you are not going to alter a course for a vessel which is like 20 miles of you because you have seen it you have sighted it now it's in the line of sight no only in the risk of collision now it says it that she can take proper and effective action proper and effective action means that the action should be such that it must resolve the situation positive it it must be able to give it must be productive it must be uh, it must result in solution for example if you see a vessel ahead of you she is head on both of you alter course to starboard so that's a proper action but it is just a proper action if there are two power driven vessels approaching each other you both alter course to starboard the action is proper but is it effective what if you just alter 2 degrees and you are still maybe passing by two cables initially the cpa was zero now it became two cables is it effective no but is it proper yes so the rule says proper and effective the word proper means compliance good seamanship and effective means that it must resolve your situation again i am repeating the example two power driven vessels are approaching each other head on are they just end up altering 2 2 degrees to starboard action is proper but it's not effective so effective means it must resolve the situation both alteration of course to starboard the both alter course to starboard provided enough sea room is available no other danger to navigation is there and they end up passing at a safe distance at safe cpa what is a safe cpa depends on your company policy and where exactly you are maneuvering the vessel so proper and effective is very very important proper and effective action to avoid collision avoid collision okay and be stopped within a distance appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and condition now let's break that down to be stopped within a distance appropriate now for example if you are out at open sea 
you are doing 10 knots, open visibility, no traffic, looks like a safe speed, normal routine speed. But you are doing the same speed, 10 knots, and you know that your engines are perhaps giving problem in going stern. Or maybe your vessel is loaded and you know that there is a shallow patch ahead of you. And now if you give a, a stern movement in an emergency, will you stop? It depends on the distance. So the distance is only half a mile. For example, when you are approaching an anchorage, you start reducing the speed like around 5-6 miles before. Then just before anchorage, you are hardly doing 0 0.2, 0 0.3 knots. So proper and effective means, uh, sorry, you must be able to stop your vessel within a distance which is safe because there is no point if you are not able to stop the vessel. Even if you say that it was a safe speed, how it can be a safe speed that if you cannot control? For example, if you are on a bike, 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 so that's not safe speed. So how will you decide what is safe speed? That keeps changing because if there is bumper to bumper traffic, then you will be doing relatively much less. You know the condition of your brake pads, how effective they are. Likewise, as a ship, you know the power of the engines, you know how far ahead you can see. You also know whether the vessel is loaded or ballast, what kind of momentum she carries. So that's going to decide. But at all times, the safe speed should be such that you should be able to stop. You should be able to stop the vessel. Okay, moving further on. So to be stopped within a distance appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions. Why does it add these lines? Why can't why didn't the rule stop at stop within a distance appropriate? Why again prevailing circumstances and conditions? For example, again I, I will repeat the same example. If the visibility is good, I can see maybe approaching a land up to a visibility of 10 miles. So I have got enough time to reduce the speed. But for an example, if I don't have a radar and there is a small boat in and around me and I want to stop my vessel in case of an emergency. So what should be my safe speed? Then it should be much lesser than what I was doing in open visibility. So your safe speed should be such that you should be able to stop the vessel within a safe distance and which is adjusted to the prevailing circumstances and conditions. So if I'm doing 10 knots now in an open visibility, if the visibility reduces, I'm approaching a port, then the safe speed will also change. Just like when you are driving on an open road, or first, you have Delhi border, so you will You will start reducing. Likewise, when you take a turn to enter your colony, maybe you are doing good speeds on your two wheeler or on your four wheeler, but once you get inside the gated community, you reduce your speed. So that is what it means. Now, what all factors? ये सारे factors हम पहले ही discuss कर चुके हैं. आप इस rule को कभी भी नहीं याद रखेंगे तो सिर्फ ये याद करिए कि जब आप scooter चलाते हैं या bike चलाते हैं या road पे दौड़ने जाते हैं आप क्या-क्या चीजें ध्यान रखते हैं किस तरीके का traffic है किस तरीके की road है and you will be able to visualize the entire rule just on the basis of common sense. Now, but we will go as per the book. In determining safe speed, the following factors shall be amongst those taken into account. Now, what are these factors? By all vessels means by all vessels, whether you are PDV, whether you are an NUC, whether you are a RAM, whether you are a CBD, fishing vessel, no exemptions. It says by all vessels. Okay. What is point number one? State of visibility, most important. If you, dis if you remember the discussion we had yesterday about, about uh, redu uh, reduced visibility, visibility is one of the most important thing because it decides outreach. How far can you see? How early you will be able to detect? And we are not including radars as of now. First, just imagine that, like I said, this, these rules were written at times when radars were not available on all the ships and the quality of radars and their ability to pick up a target was not as good as it is in today's world and today's, with today's technology. You have got AIS to have a... Uh, target still being provided to you even though she's around the corner of a bent you can still see her because AIS works on a different principle as compared to a radar so remember here when we talk about these six points we are assuming line of sight no radars radars ke liye baad mein rules ko alag se likha gaya. so the state of visibility so how far can you see it is going to decide how much time I have how what decision uh, uh, I can make because more the time effective can be my decision, more time to appraise the situation, more time to see someone, more time to see what they are doing and more time for them to see what I am doing. So more, less chances of confusion and more chances of resolving the situation effectively. So the most important point is how far we can see that is the state of visibility. Now point two is the traffic density including concentration. Now import, important is they could have stopped at the traffic density. But they did not. They have mentioned categorically 
concentrations of fishing vessels or any other vessels why have they written it because fishing vessels if you see in general they fleet they they, they fish in a fleet okay so when you're determining your safe speed if you are there if you have entered a fishing fleet with you know numbers thousands or hundreds of fishing vessels around you that is good enough of a reason to immediately stop your uh, to reduce your speed so if you see a patch of fishing vessel maybe your a uh, safe speed when the patch was maybe 10 miles away from you you could have been doing 8 knots but now when as you start to approach the patch you might have to further reduce because fishing vessels they are shipping in a lot of number together and you might be required a little lesser speed than what you were doing earlier on so that's why they have specially mentioned the concentration of fishing vessel and also remember guys now the second point it says is the maneuverability of the vessel with special reference to stopping distance and turning ability in prevailing circumstances the maneuverability of the vessel now maneuverability if you are on a tanker as compared to a handy max your turning circle will vary your effectiveness of the rudder is going to vary if you are a container ship powerful engines again you you will be far more maneuverable as compared to a cape sizer or a vloc for a passenger ship highly maneuverable maneuverable for uh, uh, say like uh, vessels which are equipped with these az pods and what not much much more maneuverable so remember the maneuverability of the vessel will also going to decide for is kijiye aapki bike hai fatafat ghum jati hai halki si hai aap ghuma lete hain cycle hai ek haath se ghum jayegi but if you are riding a big bulky hayabusa 270 kilos she is not going to turn around that easy she is going to fall she is going to trip if you bend her too much so remember maneuverability of the vessel turning circle uh you know your your transfer your uh, ta- tactical diameter everything so while deciding safe speed you need to remember the maneuverability means how effective how maneuverable your vessel is and also maneuverability will also depend on what speed you are doing if you stop the vessel your rudder is not going to be effective as effective as it was when the engines running so you have to also know what kind of maneuverability will also include what kind of speed what kind of engine thrust you are using so remember the word maneuverability will not only just include the uh, the poster that characteristic that this is my turning it also depends what area you are what kind of speed you are doing what kind of engine thrust you are planning to use so remember maneuverability is a broad term okay with special reference to stopping distance and turning ability in the prevailing circumstances now prevail now what do we mean by stopping distance why stopping distance they mentioned separately because obviously stopping distance for a truck for a car for a bike will vary it all depends what kind of brake pads you have what kind of calipers you have what kind of disc size you have how quickly you have done what kind of maintenance have been taken place on that likewise stopping distance of a tanker loaded tanker tanker in ballast or vloc in ballast vloc loaded how much loaded whether loaded to a summer draft tropical winter means the momentum will decide how far will you go and the momentum is dis- is equal to mass in- into distance so you have to remember that what speed you are going you are doing your your stopping distance will vary as per your ship size the condition whether it is loaded and also stopping distance will vary according to the circumstances means if you have a current which is against your stopping distance will reduce considerably especially strong current 4 5 knots against wind vis a vis compared to wind from a stern current from stern so remember stopping distance you it keeps changing it it all depends where are you and your stopping distance will also vary where exactly you are maneuvering out at open sea your stopping distance will be much less as compared to your stopping distance in a channel in a river why because your ship is not moving alone behind and front of the ship the entire block of water is moving together because the water has because water has got no space to dissipate like in open ocean so when you maneuver your ship in a channel in a river you are not just countering your own weight you are also countering the weight of that entire block of water which is moving along with you so your stopping distance will change drastically and this is the reason it will increase and this is the reason it increases in narrow channels because you are not just moving the vessel alone along with the vessel the whole block of water if you are this, this is your ship the whole block of water in and around that area will also move so that will increase your stopping distance okay and turning ability in the prevailing circumstances again turning a vessel in open waters as compared to shallow waters is different you know the turning radius increases in shallow waters why again the water is not able to dissipate from the reduced uk sea hence forth the angle 
of attack changes the angle of attack is much lesser and hence for you doing you end up doing much more uh, larger turning circles so ये दो चीजें बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है फर्स्ट इज यू आर अप्रोचिंग अपोट यू वॉन्ट टू टर्न दैसल अराउंड इन एन इमीडिएट इन केस ऑफ अ डेंजर एंड योर टर्निंग सर्कल हैज इंक्रीज सो अगेन दैट विल डिसाइड वॉट स्पीड यू कैन अप्रोच देयर सो दैट इज वाई देव मैंशन दीज टू वर्ड्स सेपरेटली नाउ कमिंग टू पॉइंट फोर एट नाइट द प्रेजेंस ऑफ बैकग्राउंड लाइट सच एज शोर लाइट और फ्रॉम बैक स्कैटर ऑफ अर ओन लाइट नाउ वाई दिस पॉइंट हैज बीन गिवन दिस पॉइंट हैज बीन गिवन especially if you have sailed and if you are approaching port what is going to happen out at sea if you see a vessel you can clearly identify the lights because that's the only light you are going to focus upon now imagine you can see one white light and behind that you are approaching a port and i put thousands of other lights led lights on the bridge there is chinese new year so you can see all these glittering lights there is diwali in india you can see the coastline entirely filled with different lights how difficult it is for you then to identify a vessel especially if the vessel is small showing just one white light that one light coupled with different colors of shore light will make it much more difficult for you that means to identify the target or to even identify that there is a target so in that case you need more time in case you think oh looks like there is something is it is there something third officer just pick up the binocular and check or second officer can you check oh i can see something now this discussion starts no sir looks like a light from the bridge no 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 yeah looks like a target the look there is something on the radar so that means you need more time to evaluate the situation because now you have got much more dis- distraction cricket bhi hum log khelte hain aapne dekha hoga background apne black rakhte hain why so that you can see the white ball clearly the ball clearly agar tum red ball se khelte ho then they keep a white background so that you can see the red ball very clearly now imagine here the entire background has been you know come a flash with different colors of light so how you are going to identify one light which is tiny at some 6 7 miles away very difficult so very very important back scatter uh, presence of shore lights now what do we mean by back scatter of our own light now you must have seen agar aapne kohre mein gaadi chalai hai dosto kabhi if you have driven your car in fog you always see that the light scatters you see your own light because not the, the throw of the light from going all uh, the entire throw doesn't go forward you can see some throw of light coming you can see like you know it's scattering why because there is fog in the air that is the easiest way to see that that is what back scatter means also even if there is no fog you will see that agar aapka light itna hai headlight itna hai it it won't just exactly come in that area there will be some back scatter which you can see jo filter ho ke aapke cabin mein bhi aata hai bolte hain yaar andar bilkul andhera rehna chahiye if you see a movie you they make it completely dark in the night because so that you can just focus on the screen what happens with the back scatter same problem if when the navigational light is on there is certain amount of back scatter which comes that back scatter increases if there is uh, uh, water vapor because light tends to scatter more especially in case of fog so again you have light which will be falling behind rather than going ahead so that will again confuse you and make it more difficult for you to identify a target and that's what the word back scatter means so these things will also decide about what should be your safe speed now the fifth one is obvious the state of wind sea and current we have already discussed and the proximity of navigational hazards of course left and right i cannot alter port or starboard because i have got shallow patches then obviously my i cannot do my full speed because i know i cannot go i cannot go port i cannot go starboard the only option is to reduce speed that is what i explained you that uh, uh, the state of wind sea current and proximity of navigational hazard so if i am a ram vessel doing full ahead and you know taking over everyone and saying hey i was a ram you should have stayed clear no i am supposed to also maneuver at safe speed if i know i cannot go port i cannot go starboard why did i not produce the speed reduce speed to how much which was supposed to be safe where i could have stopped my vessel within appropriate distance okay so if i am a ram that's what i need to do if i am a cvd i cannot say oh there was a power driven vessel i did not alter because i was a constrained by draft they were supposed to take care no you were a cbd you should have realized that you cannot go port and starboard or so even if there were they were not taking the action you should have been able to avoid that collision or risk of collision by your maneuver alone so why did you not stop your stop your vessel or did not reduce reduce your speed in ample time so remember proximity of navigational hazards will also decide how fast you can go exactly again coming back to the same example if you have cars left and right to your bike you're not going to drive that fast but if it's open stretch of road you will try and go little bit hard on your throttle and wind sea and current sea and current we have already discussed wind and current we have already discussed sea if you have a very rough sea strong wind your maneuver your 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 turning radius will go bananas if you have a strong beam wind your vessel will not turn only even on full ahead 
you might be taking bloody 5 to 10 minutes before she starts to turn around now that is an extra time which you need to turn her around now imagine if you have a if you are doing 12 knots there is one more vessel approaching to you at 12 knots at 6 mile radius you have got 15 minutes now imagine if 5 minutes is wasted by you because of strong beam wind to alter the course you are already in very close proximity to each other and strong winds strong currents they change how your vessel is going to maneuver or if at all she will be left maneuverable or not so these two factors are very important strong swell strong sea you will find it much more difficult and that is why it is very important that when you are altering your course or planning to alter your course in heavy weather as a duty officer do it much earlier that means if you have not reduced your speed assuming you were doing the same speed in poor weather and you are doing relatively same speed in good visibility good weather remember now the vessel is going to take much more time because of the strong wind strong swell it is not just going to come uh, from the course like at starboard 5 starboard 10 you might have to go starboard 20 even harder starboard sometimes not even at harder starboard you will see very strong wind and you have a big windage area container ships gantry ships they will find it very difficult even with the rudder harder starboard and if the engines are not going full ahead or if the load increases so this point is very very important now the final point is draft in relation to available depth of water why is that your available depth is going to decide how much you are going to squat your available depth is again going to indirectly affect your turning circle it's going to affect your stopping distance more the you can see more the water can flow easily the easier you are, you are going to be to stop easier you are going to be maneuver uh, uh, is more easily it is uh, you can alter course more easily so depth in relation to what is very important and then further it restricts you of how much can you alter and if you cannot alter then speed is the only way to avoid a collision so you have to further reduce your speed so when you were out at open sea, 18 meters drop, you had still 50 meters depth, you know, port, starboard, reducing speed, stopping engines, all these options are available. Now you are maneuvering in a channel, you don't have room on the port side, you don't have room on the starboard side, even if it is there, you can just alter by 2-3 degrees. What can you do? Just reduce speed. So at that time, you wouldn't, wouldn't like to go at 13, 14, 15 knots where you cannot stop the vessel or perhaps not effectively stop the vessel to allow the other vessel to pass and especially in the case where they don't take correct action or proper and appropriate action so in that case it makes more all the way more important for you to realize that what is your depth draft what is the depth available and what kind of sea room you have available so adjust your speed accordingly and do it smartly now how will we remember these six points so this is a short form. Hai. VD, Victor, Delta, VD makes little willy drop. I'll repeat myself. The short form is VD makes little willy drop. Now, what does that mean? Pella point of visibility, ka, so V is a Dusra point of traffic density, ka, D is a gap. So, V and D make. Make is M for maneuvering, maneuverability. At night, presence of the background light light little means light and uh, the state of wind w willy should remind you wind and drop means draft so the way to remember this rule very easily is vd makes little willy drop where v stands for visibility d stands for depth make means maneuverability little means light willy means wind and drop means draft so vd makes little willy drop six points finish last section now abhi we were talking about where the vessels are able to see each other without the radar so if my ability to see a vessel with naked eyes was six nautical miles now i have a radar with me as well with that radar i can see vessels as far as 20 nautical miles and even in reduced visibility or practically zero visibility i can still see other vessels and practically at the same range more or less my ability to sight a vessel in heavy seas and swells and guys again sorry I have to say about why the reason of state of sea is also mentioned is state of sea it is it becomes difficult for the radar to pick up a target why because all the targets are moving up and down with the sea and the swell and especially if it's a small target you may not be able to get a fixed echo the echo might come and disappear again why because the vessel is continuously moving up and down with the sea and swell so that's why the condition of sea also affects not only your visual detection but also it will detect it will affect the detection by radar so target you were able to see the white light then it disappeared and especially in case you end up trying scanning that area when 
she was going perhaps moving down with the swell so as per you you have scanned the area there is nothing there but but there is something there which you were not able to identify and first go why because the sea conditions were so choppy and sometimes sea conditions also results in a lot of spray which can reduce visibility so that's why sea conditions are very very important now coming to radar now my ability once i have a radar if my uh, with my my if my ability to see the target was at 6 nautical miles with naked eyes with the radar i can see as far as 20 nautical miles and far more effectively even redu in reduced visibility my 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 ability to detect the target even in a rough choppy sea is far much better than as compared to a naked eye so will it give me extra leverage of course so if i was doing 8 knots now i have a radar can i do 10 knots maybe yes you can because now you have got something more to back up rely upon so your safe speed will change and safe speed does not mean that you are always reducing in this case your safe speed ends up increasing giving you an extra leverage whether you increase and use that leverage it's up to you as a master and depends on all these circumstances but you have the room to increase the speed so if you have a built-in radar and you were doing 10 knots in uh, good visibility the visibility reduces if you still have radar you might do 8 knots 6 knots vis a vis when you where you don't have radar you might even have to com come to a complete stop or anchor the vessel or perhaps wait for visibility to improve or do like two knots three knots where you are just trying to have bare minimum uh, headway to keep her on the course so operational radar so if your vessel is provided with the radar which will be the case what all things will decide your safe speed the characteristic efficiency and limitations of the radar why sabse jada important hai radar kis tarike ka hai agar phone apple hai your efficiency on the phone changes because the software is far more interactive much more faster or first kiji aapke se ferrari hai safety everything is far more better in terms of quality likewise for marine radars not all radars are same you have got military radars which can pick up target as far as bloody thousands of kilometers whereas in you have a substandard radar jo sirf naam ka radar hai what kind of beam what strength of beam it it throws what kind of interaction you will have what kind of the maintenance has been carried out magnetron ka kitna age ho gaya hai all that will decide the characteristic efficiency and limitation of radar limitation of radars what is the limitation of the radar the limitation of radar can be that in case you have not tuned the radar properly it may not be able to pick up the target altogether or if there is a target behind the obstruction it will not be able to detect it ais will but radar won't so there are these are the limitation then it has a limitation of shadow sectors like if there is a antenna behind your radar scanner so that zone will become a blind spot for the radar anything within that area the radar will not be able to identify even if it is a fucking vlct cc it does not matter so limitation of the radars these are one of few few of many limitations of the radar if the, again if your magnetron is in a poor condition then your ability to detect the target and at what range it is going to detect is again a limitation of the radar and again there is a limitation that how far your radar can detect what is the height of the antenna is again a limitation of your radar higher the antenna more chances that further your radar will be able to scan and see what range you are using if you are using a 6 nautical mile range you cannot see what is a 20 nautical mile so this again becomes a limitation which has been introduced by the user so characteristic efficiency and limitation of the radar you must keep in, in mind when you are saying that okay i have a radar now so i can perhaps do a knot or two extra so first point is this second is any constraint imposed by the radar scale in use exactly the point i told you constraint imposed by radar scale means radar range means if i am a duty officer if i am using my radar on three three nautical miles range how far can i see it all depends how much off centered my vessel is but still i won't be able to see something which is 12 mile, 12 nautical miles away from me if I'm using my radar on say like 48 nautical miles, do, taki sir, pehle si pata lag jai. It, the, the chances are that if there is a very small target that I will not be able to detect the presence of that target because the echo will be very, very small. So though your range is high, still that is a limitation. So what range is appropriate? It all depends again, just like your speed depends, your range also depends. It varies, it varies whether you are in high traffic density area, what kind of traffic is in and around you is going to decide what range and how much you want to see ahead. If I'm maneuvering a river, I don't want to be on 12 nautical mile range and see clutter all bloody cluttering my screen. No, I want typically in that case, I'll keep it three nautical miles for one and six for the other. If I'm approaching a berth, I would like to see everything large, big, clear 
I might keep one radar on 1.5 nautical miles and the other one on three nautical miles. Whereas when I'm out at open sea, reduced visibility, I might play around with one radar on three and six miles continuously, three miles, six miles. Other one I might scan between six and 12 or 12 or 24. So there is no fixed range. You have to continuously increase or decrease depending on how the targets are coming up, how effectively your radar is picking up the target and what exactly wants and requires your attention and how closely the vessel is going to pass. Because if you change over your scale and the vessel is passing you from 1.5 nautical miles and you increase the uh, range to 24 nautical miles, you will, you will become very uncomfortable in your mind because you will see everything is very close to you. Whereas if you bring that scale down to 6 miles or 3 nautical miles, you will be able to see far more area room to maneuver the vessel around. Okay, so that's what it means constraint imposed by radar scale in use. Now the third point is the effect of radar detection of the sea state, weather and other sources of interference. Now again, we have already discussed how the sea state is going to affect your radar detection. If the vessel is going up and down, there are high chances that your radar radio beams may not be able to make a proper contact and may not be reflected back. Now, also depends what kind of uh, uh, weather it is. Like if there is, uh, when you are emitting these radio waves, radio magnetic waves detect a uh, target, how far will they travel and how far they will move ahead and gather and pick up a target also depends what medium the uh, uh, radio magnetic wave will uh, pass through. So if you have got foggy weather, lots of spray in the air, the energy will be consumed by presence of vapor, water vapor in the air, fog in the air. So your ability to detect a target far ahead in the range will be compromised. Plus your own vessel is moving up and down in sea and swell. So obviously it will be very difficult for the radar to catch a target and show that target on a steady bearing or at a steady position. So that's what it means when it says the effect on radar detection of sea state weather and other sources of interference. Well, other sources of interference can be a radar jammer or other sources of interference can be some other radar in vicinity. Usme radar mein interaction hone lagta hai. And you will see some disturbance, some noise on the screen. Jaysa aapke pehle TVs mein aata tha, noise. If you see the noise, it means that if you have a portal or poor light condition, it will be pixelated. So that's what it means by interference. So all these things are going to decide how effectively your radar can detect a target and present it to you at the same time. Moving on to point number four, the possibility that small vessels, ice and other floating objects may not be detected by radar at an adequate range. What does it mean? Again, the same point. What does it mean by adequate range? If I keep my radar at 96 nautical miles, there is a small fishing boat which my radar has picked up at 2 nautical, mile, nautical miles. Will that target show up? No. Because if you have seen a radar, a marine radar, you will see there is always a small bit of clutter, especially around the center of the screen or around your own vessel. So if you have increased the range to so much, that clutter itself will be will come to an area to a scale of 3, 4, 5 nautical miles dep 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 depending what is the state of the sea. And also one thing I would like to tell you guys that state of the sea if it's really choppy, your radar ends up picking more uh, false echoes because it makes interaction with the uh, with the sea and the swell and they come back on the screen and they show up as false targets. There is no target. It just picks up randomly all these, uh, you know, the sea flying here and there. So, wo sabakwa as a target dikne lagta hai. So, then you increase the clutter to declutter the screen and only focus on the target. Now you will say that why didn't, don't we use the clutter to full and just get rid of the sea altogether. Reason being, in a way you are suppress, suppressing the power of your radio magnetic waves. So if you suppress it too much, it will not be able to pick up the target only. So how much to keep it, it all depends how choppy the sea is, how much you want to declutter the screen, etc. So remember, and also if the nature, if the boat is made of, of iron steel, the chances of your radio wave being reflected is far more higher. Now you see all these stealth aircrafts. They are not detected by radar. Why? Because the surface are inclined and you know, they are given these angles that the, if, a, if a radio magnetic waves of, of radar will, will come and hit them, it will be bounced. It will not bounce back. It will be just deflected in random direction. So if, if you have a boat which is made up of wood, which is not a very good, you know, transmitter of radio waves. So the chances of your radar picking up the target is much less. Now you will see there are radar reflectors given to you in rescue boat and live boat for the same reason because these radar reflectors 
are cut in these kind of shapes which are best suited to reflect a radio magnetic wave back to the radar scanner for the radar scanner to pick pick you up immediately so the uh, possibility of small vessel and if that vessel is very very small and your scanner is too high the chances are that it may not detect it all together so plus how many vessels of this nature is in and around you if you know there is a complete fleet of small vessels around you you have to be more careful guys because you know that your radar even though it is the best quality radar may not be able to pick up all the targets and if you go missing and the visibility is not good the chances are that you will end up finding them or detecting them at much lesser range and that range may not allow you to take a very effective or proper action and you might run in a risk of collision or actually colliding with one of them and other floating objects now other floating object again something like an iceberg they are not the best reflector of radio magnetic waves or they may not reflect it at all and again their edges and the shape of the iceberg makes it very probable that it may not even show up on the radar though it is pretty much there and especially in the night vessels you can still see how will you see an iceberg there are no lights on the iceberg nobody is putting up there that they will light a fire and they'll show you so that's why they have mentioned the word ice and other floating objects other floating objects can be your boys they are very very small quite possible that if they if there, if there are voids around you there are installations around you approaching a port then they may not be always picked up by the radar so again adjust your speed point number 5 the number location and movement of vessels detected by radar now why this is given the number location and movement first kijiye i'll give an example there are 1000 boats 1000 boats port and starboard to my vessel but all those 1000 boats are at a range of 4 nautical miles means this is my ship 500 boats here 500 boats here they are well clear of me none of them are moving so will i be able to do extra speed yes it's it's, it's just like you have got these trucks parked on the side of the road they are not moving they are all just parked so will you reduce speed no you will continue at the same speed but what if these 1000 boats they start to move everybody is moving left right center aage piche just like it happened in the currents reel that you know too many targets is looking through the binocular have you seen that reel karan ne jo banayi thi fishing vessel fishing traffic in china so what if everybody is going bananas left right center somebody is coming out from the port somebody is inbound somebody is picking up the pilot picking up uh, reducing speed somebody is increasing the speed what is happening now you need more time to evaluate the same situation plus range the ye humne kal bhi baat kari thi if one target is at 5 nautical miles cpa reducing risk of collision and there is one target which is at 12 nautical miles with risk of collision zero cpa i am going to attend the one which is going to be closer to me because that's going to be my bigger concern okay but every target which i plot and every target which is extra i need more time to evaluate the situation not only me the radar needs extra time because every time i plot it will take 2 to 3 minutes of time before it gives me steady data about that vessel what is she doing which direction what speed cpa tcpa so on and so forth okay so and if there are multiple targets i need to see who's going where where am i how how much sea room i have should i re- reduce the speed should i alter how far i can alter how much can i alter so again this will require more time and the only way to buy more time is reduce the speed to a safe speed what is it that number again depends and comes to you with experience and the final point is the more exact assessment of the visibility that may be possible when radar is used to determine the range of vessel or other objects in vicinity what does this mean very simple guys when you see something from your eye aur aapke dost ne ya kisi ne pucha kitna dur lag raha hai so you always say that around 500 meter when you throw a ball on a pitch your eyes even though you have not measured the pitch knows the distance in terms of how much power you need to apply so that the ball can pitch and not just fly over the head of the batsman so when you see something through your naked eye you have a perception isliye ship simulator mein chalana mushkil hota hai because you don't get the perception of depth that how far exactly the vessel is when you when you are doing any sort of simulated exercise in the simulators very difficult there to maneuver the vessel because that depth is not there but when we are out at sea our eyes when we look at something and over the period of time of experience you can say look at a, a target and say that ah, approximately this is what it looks like 
and then you can but if you have a radar this approximation approximation and this guesswork is out from the picture why because radar has something called range if you are using the radar you know radar will give you the bearing matlab kya direction mein target aur kitna dur hai range means how far is it so if you have the radar you can accurately identify okay edwin i'll answer your question i'll just pin it for now yeah so radar se kya hota hai radar se you are able to now first kijiye fog aisa to hota nahi charo taraf se ek jaisa hi hoga you have a patch of fog ठीक है तो यहाँ थोड़ा सा विजिबिलिटी स्टाबोर्ड साइड में कम हो गया वेर इज इन पोर्ट साइड में थोड़ा सा बारिश हो रहा है ओके फर्ज कीजिए फॉर एन एग्जांपल दोनों जगह का विजिबिलिटी अलग अलग है सो हाउ मच इज द विजिबिलिटी इट डिपेंड्स दैट टाइम यू कैन यूज योर रेडार टू फाइंड द रेंज ऑफ द टारगेट सो इफ यू सी अ टारगेट ऑन द रेडार एंड यू सी द रेंज इज ट्वेल्व नॉटिकल माइल्स यू पिकअप द बायनाकुलर यू आर नॉट एबल टू सी द टारगेट That means definitely visibility is not 12 nautical miles. Now you again pick up the binocular after five ten minutes, and now the vessel is at eight nautical miles, and you start to see the side light slightly at around seven eight nautical miles. So that means the visibility that time is in and around seven eight miles. That's why you are able to see it with your eyes with the binocular. So this is what they mean when they say using the radar to identify how much is the visibility. That if you can see a vessel at an appropriate at at a given range, that means utna visibility to hai, but us direction mein. Now it can vary. maybe right ahead ahead of you it can be as good as 6 nautical miles whereas in on the port side it can be 5 or 4 nautical miles there is a small patch or same case of rain as the rain starts to approach you are moving towards the rain patch the visibility will 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 will, will start to reduce gradually so jo target aapko pehle 6 7 8 nautical miles 10 nautical miles pe easily dikh ja raha tha ab wo nahi dikhega so what will you see or oh, this target i was able to sight earlier now i am not able to sight it visually but i can see it on the radar the radar range shows 10 nautical miles from me i'm not able to see it so definitely visibility is less than 10 now you see at 6 nautical miles you are not still able to see it now you see it all of a sudden ah sir 2 nautical miles oh i can see that vessel now so you go to the radar and you measure the range of the target and it comes out 2 nautical miles so that time the visibility on and around you can say is 2 nautical miles what does it means that the earliest i'll be able to sight something visually will be 2 nautical mile what does it translate into see if the speed is okay whether you'll be able to stop the vessel or not now how will you remember these six points the first six points i gave you vd makes little willy drop v for visibility d for density m for maneuverability l for uh, little uh, l for light w for uh, your wind and d for draft so vd makes little willy drop okay now how will we remember these six points again very simple and this one is is a little off one so please don't go to the language this is how the rule was given to me cheeky charlie so cheeky c stands for characteristic S- second c charlie stands for constraint e for eat if which which stands for effect on radar range so cheeky charlie eat pussy no more okay so cheeky charlie eat pussy no more so c is for characteristic c is for constraint e for effect on radar detection p is for pos- uh, possibility and no n stands for number and more the word stands for more exact assessment so this is how you can remember these six points because over the period of time you might end up missing one or two points but if you remember uh Uh, this uh sentence then you know for sure either you have something you have missed or you are not able to recollect something so vd makes little willy drop and cheeky charlie eat pussy no more so 12 points and 12 shortcuts so i hope you remember them now is the that's the code language <laughs> yeah what happens to the ship according to a captain or navigating crew when there is a natural event like volcano eruption or tsunami well in that case you are supposed to head out from the port if you are already in the port it depends if the port expects the tsunami to affect that port then being inside the port is very very bad spot or situation to be in you can end up damaging the vessel damaging the berth the jetty or running into other vessels in and around you or some other installation so probably you would like to head towards open seas where you have got much more room to maneuver and much more options to either run away from the situation if you have ample time and if not then to best maneuver the vessel 
as you can and as you can handle in those given circumstances yeah when we are picking a pilot will our vessel be considered as ram yes by the definition yes transfer of the personal yes it is just like when do we so ship cvd lights hum khud to hum kabhi jalate hi nahi wo pilot hi aake bolta hai switch on the cvd lights very rarely or something like singapore strait it says clearly if your draft is more than 15 meters then you are supposed to show cvd lights so by the definition transfer of person is taking place so yes at that time you are ideally uh ram vessel yes if you are to go by the definition yes any other question guys i'll give you 2 to 3 minutes and then we'll wrap up the live because it's been quite a long oh verbal verbal blah 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 ओह बोलते बोलते गलत हो गए यार कल वैसे भी मंडे साढ़े बारह बज रहे हैं तो विल कॉल इट अ नाइट एनी अदर क्वेश्चंस फॉर सेफ स्पीड गाइस रूल सिक्स स्टार्ट्स विद एवरी वेसल शेल प्रोसीड सो व्हाट अबाउट एनयूसी इज एनयूसी नॉट अ वेसल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेल डिपेंड्स व्हाट काइंड ऑफ एन एनयूसी इज इफ द एनयूसी इज बिकॉज यू हैव अ रडार रडार सॉरी रडर फेलियर इमेजिन करिए योर रडर इज स्टक इन वन पोजीशन हार्डर साउंड में अटक गया इंजन तो तब भी था रोक सकते थे सो इट ऑल डिपेंड्स यू कैन नॉट से एवरी एन यू सी इज सेम दी काइंड ऑफ एमरजेंसी विच यू हैव नाउ इमेजिन करिए आपकी ब्रिस्टी में मर गई है सारी तो कौन स्टेक खींचेगा नीचे से चीफ इंजीनियर तब भी कम कर सकता है ना सो देर आर वेरी रेयर सर्कमस्टांसिस समथिंग लाइक एन एक्सप्लोजन और अ फायर ऑन द ब्रिज ऑफ फायर इन द इंजन दैट यू गॉट नो टाइम टू रिड्यूस द स्पीड द रूल्स इज एवरी वेसल बट एन यू सी सेज दैट अ वेसल बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सेप्शनल सर्कमस्टांसिस she is not able to maneuver as required by these rules so when you go in a situation where you end up in a collision and you go in the court of law the court of law is going to decide your nature of nuc as what exactly happened on the vessel if you have an engine failure you will be an nuc but you still have got rudder so in that case speed will drop automatically but if you were doing 14 knots approaching so court will say that will held you liable ke bhai aap itna speed pe approach kyu kar rahe the आपने चौदह नॉट किस लिए रखी हुई थी कई बार ऐसा होता है कि अप्रोच बर्थ पे वेसल एंड सब कोलाइडिंग विद द बर्थ सो द मैटर गोज टू द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ एंड देन दे डिसाइड वेदर द वेसल्स अप्रोच इट सेल्फ और सेफ और नॉट सो एनयूसी का केस इज नॉट जस्ट स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड यस और नो इट डिपेंड्स वट कैंड ऑफ एन एनयूसी यू आर बट इज एनयूसी एक्जेप्टेड फ्रॉम दिस रूल्स यस बट द रूल्स ऑल्सो सी इज वेसल द रीजन बिंग अगेन दिस इज बिंग रिटर्न बाय द लॉ एस सो यू नीड टू सी यू हैव टू बी वेरी स्पेसिफिक वट क्वेश्चन एंड वट सिचुएशन यू आर इन बट एनयूसी इज नॉट एक्जेप्टेड but by the definition it is it can bypass these rules altogether because nuc maina ko pata hai if my rudder is stuck i am an nuc i cannot control but can i not reduce my speed so if i go in the court of law tomorrow by running into a collision the lawyers are going to ask me that what for all you never reduce the speed for last half an hour you were still doing 14 knots or 15 knots or 10 knots so it all depends this is a subject is this is a this is a very argument wala question but अगर आपको सीधा सीधा सिर्फ थियोरेटिकल आंसर चाहिए देन एन यू सी एक्चुअली इज एक्सेप्टेड फ्रॉम द रूल्स बाय द डेफिनेशन इट सेल्फ दैट इज अनएबल टू मनूवर एज रिक्वायर्ड अनएबल टू मनूवर एज रिक्वायर्ड बाय दीज रूल्स बट हाउ फार बट स्टिल शी इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू स्टे एंड कंप्लाई सो फार एज इट इज पॉसिबल टू हर इन दोज गिवन सर्कमस्टांसिस सो दैट डजेंट मीन जस्ट बिकॉज शी इज एन एनयू सी दैट मीन शी कैन कंप्लीटली बायपास एवरीथिंग एज एज एन एनयू सी she will still try whatever she can comply she will comply she can she will try to comply but rudder stuck ho gaya engines to available and speed kar sakta reduce kar sakta stop kar sakta if you are an nuc you are trying to come out of that situation na you are not trying to run into further situation so why will you continue doing same crazy speed that's the answer i have a question related to ror i am confused between rule 13 and 15 oh bhai please rule 13 and 15 there is no way you can confuse it has given you very specific degrees मोर देन ट्वेंटी टू अब ऑफ द बीम प्लीज भाई आप ये नहीं बोल सकते दीज टू रूल्स आर वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट प्लीज गो एंड रीड द रूल्स अगेन क्रॉसिंग एंड ओवरटेकिंग देर इज नो वे इन द वर्ड यू कैन कंफ्यूज बिटवीन दीज टू रूल्स प्लीज गो एंड रीड द रूल वर्ड बाय वर्ड एंड प्लीज ट्राई एंड सी सम यूट्यूब वीडियोज ऑन इट इफ यू वॉन्ट मी टू एक्सप्लेन यू वो पूरा रूल उठाना पड़ेगा जो आज नहीं उठा सकते क्योंकि ये लाइफ में करते करते ही मेरे गले की बैंड बच गई है बट बहुत डिस्टिंगटिवली अलग है वॉट काइंड ऑफ लाइट्स यू आर गोइंग टू सी वेन द वेसल इज क्रॉसिंग बिजर्व इज वॉट काइंड ऑफ लाइट्स यू आर गोइंग टू सी इफ शी इज ओवरटेकिंग 
not to be confused and the rule also says not to be con- assumed overtaking vessel cannot assume later that i am a crossing okay any other questions before we wrap up the sir i just watched your rv rule live just before the live and i had one doubt if i hear fog signals abaft of the beam either on port or starboard side what action should be taken well it depends if you are able to detect the target also if you have detected the target on the radar then in that case you are supposed to comply with the rule that you cannot alter course towards the vessel a beam or about the beam but if you are only able to hear the fog signal it has got no meaning because you it is possible that there is a vessel behind you behind of you and you might be moving like this and she is moving like this it has got no meaning isiliye forward of the beam ko ko bola gaya hai but if there is a vessel which is at two nautical miles i'm doing more speed than her i'm moving away from her but what about this vessel if you are on this vessel to aapke upar wo rule apply ho jayega if you hear a fog horn of other vessel forward of your beam whose position you are not able to determine then she will comply with those rules to reduce the speed to bare minimum where she can keep, maintain her course or take all her way off so that's why this situation will automatically resolve now you get my point if you are ahead then you have got no meaning to someone who's behind you because you don't know what she is doing maybe she is just passing at 4 nautical miles or at 3 nautical miles or she might be moving in the same direction but you are doing more speed but she in regard to you will have you in forward of her beam and what does the rule says a vessel which cannot avoid a close close quarter situation with other vessel or which hears forward of her beam fox signal of other vessel shall reduce her speed to a minimum at which she can maintain her course or take all her way off so she will take action the vessel jo ye vessel tumhare liye action lega tum iske liye nahi loge action is case mein i hope i have answered you i think thanks a lot is question ne mujhe bhi thoda sochne pe majboor kara but this is what it means aap agar kis agar aap agar koi aapke piche hai to aap uske aage hai na to jiske aap aage ho is case mein wo hi karega jo karega assuming that only fog horn is being heard and you are not able to detect the target on the radar that's the condition if you are able to detect on the radar then the rule says very specifically you cannot alter the course in the direction of the vessel so that's your answer i hope i have answered it correctly and you are satisfied if not then you can tell me in the comment section and i'll try to answer it again and try to explain you a little better okay any other questions bahut hi acha question tha waise इसने मुझे सोचने पर मजबूर करा और ऑलमोस्ट फंस गया था मैं लेकिन फिर बच गया लकी उत्तरी की और हम्म और कोई क्वेश्चन अच्छा दो क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन सेक्शन में भी आए हैं सो हाउ एक्यूरेट इज द मनोवरिंग डेटा ऑन द टेबल ऑफ द ब्रिज इट्स एक्यूरेट फॉर दो सर्कमस्टांसिस इन विच द ट्रायल वॉज कैरिड आउट सो दैट्स इट whether will it be applicable to your situation or not it depends on the circumstances current drift speed radar angle hull condition so on and so forth so but still you can rely pretty much that it will be very very close in more or less every given situation that's why it is given but it is given as a guideline you cannot say exactly to the verty that my tactical diameter is 0.55512 it's not going to happen like that it can never happen like that because there are so many things which are involved in fact hull condition will also decide your fouling on the propeller will also decide because there are going to be propeller losses in case there is too much of fouling so that means overall effectiveness will come will get reduced so that's your answer i hope i am able to answer it properly venu venus lobo 8 so please read the message root underscore wala oh ho ye to bhai aapka koi question mujhe यहां तो नहीं दिखा अगर और कोई क्वेश्चन है तो आप पूछ लीजिए इफ द रेंज इज डिक्रीजिंग फॉर वेसल अब बीम ऑल्टो कोस्ट टू एक्सटेंड एट विच इट विल बी एबल टू ऑन द अदर क्वार्टर भाई ये क्या है इफ द रेंज इज डिक्रीजिंग फॉर द वेसल अब द बीम ऑल्टो कोस्ट टू द एक्सटेंड एट विच इट विल कम टू द अदर क्वार्टर नहीं यू आर नॉट एबल टू डिटरमाइन इन दैट केस ना आपने बोला सिर्फ मेरे को फॉग ऑन डिसाइड सुनाई दे रहा है यू कैन नॉट ऑलवेज से विद पिन पॉइंट एक्यूरिटी दैट दैट्स वे द फॉग ऑन इज कमिंग फॉर साउंड वो साउंड ऐसे साउंड डजेंट ट्रेवल इन लाइट इन इन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन साउंड ट्रेवल्स लाइक इन फॉर्म ऑफ अ सर्कुलर वे विद डिसिपेट्स ओके 
सो चांसेस आर दैट यू कैन से कि हाँ यार इधर से आया हुआ लग रहा है बट यू कैन नॉट स्पेसिफिकली से और स्पेशली इट इज वेरी वेरी क्लोज टू योर स्टर्न और राइट स्टर्न यू कैन नॉट से ओ एक्जैक्टली राइट स्टर्न है भाई नहीं नहीं दिस इज टू मच ऑफ थ्योरी एंड टू मच ऑफ कॉम्प्लिकेशन यू हैव टू बी इफ यू आर मेकिंग एग्जामिनेशन रूम क्वेश्चन देन यू नीड टू गिव मी दैट डेटा दैट दिस इज वेयर आई थिंक इट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम बिकॉज इफ यू चेंज द क्वेश्चन इन द मिडल ऑफ माई आंसर देन द आंसर चेंजेस दैट्स द की सो वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ स्कोप भाई ये एंकरिंग कहां से आ गई बीच में एनी थिंग रिलेटेड टू रूल सर वेन आर यू गोइंग बैक टू आर कंट्री वेन यू आर कमिंग बैक टू आर कंट्री वेरी सुन माई फ्रेंड आपको स्टोरीज में दिख जाएगा इन फॉगी सिचुएशन विच थिंग शुड बी रिमेंबर ड्यूरिंग वॉइज रूल नंबर नाइनटीन एंड यू आर चेकलिस्ट यू आर रिड्यूस विजिबिलिटी चेकलिस्ट द मोमेंट यू सी रिड्यूस विजिबिलिटी एंड इफ यू आर ड्यूटी ऑफिसर पिक आउट टेक आउट योर रिड्यूस विजिबिलिटी चेकलिस्ट और ब्रिज प्रोसीजर गाइड में आप निकाल सकते हैं रिड्यूस विजिबिलिटी का चेकलिस्ट कॉल द मास्टर इन्फॉर्मिंग दैट द विजिबिलिटी एज रिड्यूस स्टार्ट द फॉग अलार्म ओपन द ब्रिज विंडोज ट्राई इफ यू आर इन द स्पेशली इन द कोस्टल वाटर स्टैंड हैव योर इंजन रेडी फॉर इमीडिएट मनूवर बाय द रूल यू आर ऑल्सो सपोज टू हैव इट रेस्पेक्टिव यू आर एट ओपन सी यूर नॉट सो गेट योर इंजन स्टैंड बाय इन्फॉर्म मास्टर एंड कंप्लाई विद योर रिड्यूस विजिबिलिटी चेकलिस्ट स्टार्ट द फॉग हॉन विच इज एप्लीकेबल टू यर टाइप post extra lookouts and make sure both the radars are optimized for the present circumstances and condition yeah anything is short way of answer to surveyor making way making way is any vessel which is moving whether engine is running or not agar ye hai making way chal raha hai kya this is making way she is using the machinery or she is doing substantial speed okay she is not drift drifting is not considered as making way if you stop the vessel dead stop and there is two knots of current you are still moving but then not you are not the only one which is getting drifted if we assume that other two three vessels are also in the vicinity they are also drifting with the same speed assuming the drift is going to be same for everyone else as well so making way is actually you are moving under the power you are moving your, your your vessel is actually having headway okay it can be it is now it is debatable what if i stop the engine at 13 knots am i making way or not yes you are making way so substantial uh, headway or uh, in case you are a sailing vessel to aapka to kabhi pankha chalne wala hi nahi hai to aap to kabhi making way ho gayi nahi making way means you are cutting through the water cutting through the water with some sort of propelling uh, either machinery or some way of Uh, use of other propelling uh, propulsion uh, being used say like sail or uh, an engine in that matter of fact but so you should be cutting through the water except when you are completely stopped and you are just drifting which is not considered you need to get in in that case aap bahut bade argument mein pad sakte hain aapko aap dekhoge kai cases hain isme court verdicts hain what is considered as underway or making way but for a simple understanding making way is when you are cutting through the water you are moving in the water and for all practical reasons we are mostly we are going to be on pdv power driven vessels so means using the engines and making way and substantial amount of uh, uh, way uh, like i gave an example you are doing 15 knots i stop the engine am i not making way yes i am making way the the reason of making way is that to categorically say that the target is moving that means the threat is much more because she is moving she is she is having headway that's the idea that's the reason they categorically gives you separate light signals and fog signals for making way so is it compulsory to follow the rule all the time nothing is compulsory in life the rule themselves tell you in rule number 2 that there are exceptions but will you be able to justify those exceptions uh, exemptions and exceptions so the if you don't comply with the rule of the road your liability will increase your responsibility will increase in case something goes wrong something things go south so that's my answer to whether you should comply with the rules or not for a duty officer there are no exemptions in case you cannot comply with the rule the standing instruction of the master and company says call the master so let the master decide whether he wants to comply or do is he running through some exceptional circumstances for the safety of the vessel or crew that he is not able to comply with the rules of the road or to resolve a situation where only non compliance of the rule will result in safe passing of the two vessels if you are taking action without determining roc as per rot tss or narrow channel especially and keep clear is after determining roc you are taking action if i am wrong correct me sir 
you are always taking action if there is a risk of collision if there is no risk of collision why would you take an action main yahan hong kong mein baitha hua hu aap apni gaadi leke india mein kahin chala rahe hain to main koi yahan table ke niche ghus jaunga ki kahin takkar na ho jaye agar khatra hi nahi hai to action kis cheez ke liye le raha hu if there is no threat what for all the safeguards are being created so if there is no risk what for all i am worried so rule of the road are engagement of two or more vessels in case they are involved in a risk of collision okay how to find target in foggy situation suppose radar fails you cannot find a target with visually assuming what if the visibility is zero now it depends how good is the visibility now foggy situation is also one nautical mile foggy is also 1.5 miles it the word is reduce and in and around reduce so if you are in and around you're going to assume you are in reduced visibility and act accordingly how will you find well if the radar is gone visually if i say zero visibility then the fog horn is the only way you can say that there is something in and around you typical range of a fog horn is around 2 nautical miles so that's your only way but in for all practical purposes if your radar is gone visibility is zero you will end up anchoring the vessel rather than maneuvering the vessel it's almost impossible for you to make it without any incident and accident but if this is the question that my radar is gone then my only way of making out the vessel in and around me will be by the fog horn okay because i cannot see them if i cannot see them i cannot plot them i cannot give you bearing i cannot give you the give you distance i cannot give you nothing sir how much is ais useful in collision avoidance well ais ka sabse acha baat hai ke ais gives you situational awareness it does it's not a means to be utilized or which qualify as a means to decide your action but it can give you a better mental picture and it can be just an aid to your navigation for say example it helps in just reassuring that the identity of the vessel is same it gives you the name it gives you the destination so you get extra information which can help you if you know if you see the target if you see the information after positive identification of the target that this target is also going to the same pilot station and she is ahead of me her pilot is going to be earlier than me then you might reduce the speed much earlier even before you run into a risk of collision with her plus the advantage of ais is that if you are around the corner if you are around a bend your radar may not be able to pick pick you up because your radar ki radio magnetic waves and they are not going not going to filter through the obstruction but as you target will still be available second in case of very bad sea whether that whether where there is a very small target made of wood going up and down the radar may not be able to pick it up but the as will still show up that's why in china most of these boats now are using ais so that's the leverage of uh, ais that the target of chances of missing an as target is less but the problem with ais is that if the sensor malfunctions then the heading the speed everything can malfunction and if the ais information is not updated then of course that makes it unreliable and you don't know whether the other person has updated it or not many a times it happens that the uh, navigation status is presented incorrectly the heading is shown incorrectly the speed is shown incorrectly because of some interference between the sensors so that's why ais is cannot be relied upon or cannot be the sole entity on the basis of which you take action they are just aid to navigation not a part of collision avoidance aapne kahi rule mein dekha nahi hoga ais likha hua the, the word ais is not mentioned radars are officially mentioned you can use them officially to take your action to decide what action you are going to take okay sir i am training cadet from bangladesh is there any way to get scholarship in industry in india bhai iska jawab mujhe nahi pata fog signal range of audible around 2 nautical miles rule of the road can x mein diya hua hai mere bhai but i hope i am correct 2 nautical miles bahut time pehle padha tha so please cross check zarur kar lena agar galat hu to i'm sorry but 99% 2 nautical miles port authority makes a separate traffic rule for him bhai ye question dobara but we shouldn't always rely on ais correct you cannot rely on ais officially it is an aid to navigation it is not supposed to be used you cannot say i took this alteration basis ais data it is just supposed to aid you in having a mental picture which is already created with the help of visual and radar up and over that something extra that's it but you cannot quote ais information that basis of ais information i took the action okay mm ओके सेलिंग बीस ने कंफर्म करा है टू नॉटिकल माइल्स अरे भाई याद है अभी भी मुझे रूल्स 
भूला नहीं हूँ बहुत खुशी हुई मेरे को जान के कि मैं अभी तक भूला नहीं थैंक यू वेरी मच सेलिंग बीस्ट टू नॉटिकल माइल्स पोर्ट अथॉरिटी में एक सेपरेट ट्रैफिक रूल फॉर हिम भाई ये क्वेश्चन समझ में नहीं आया दोबारा लिख दो और कुछ था फॉक्स सिग्नल रेंज भी हो गया थैंक यू चिंटू आई गॉट सम आइडिया सर हाउ मच इज ए आई एस यूजफुल इन कोलिजन अवॉइडेंस बता दिया भाई ओके और कुछ सेवेंटी फाइव लेस्ट वॉट इज मैन टू प्रोसीड अंडर वे और मेकिंग वे अंडर वे मतलब अगर आपका जहाज ऐसे खड़ा हुआ भी नहीं है ना सिर्फ ऐसे खड़ा हुआ है पर एंकर पे या मोरिंग पे नहीं है और या एग्राउंड नहीं है तो वो अंडर वे है कोई भी सिचुएशन जहां आप एग्राउंड नहीं हो या आप मूड नहीं हो या आप एंकर नहीं हो यानी उसके अलावा कौन सी ऐसी सिचुएशन होती है यार मतलब जहां आप स्टॉप खड़े हुए खड़े हो ऐसे भटक रहे हो पानी के साथ यू आर ऑलरेडी अंडर वे द मोमेंट यू कास्ट ऑफ योर रोप्स यू आर अंडर वे द मोमेंट योर एंकर इज अवे यू आर अंडर वे सो एनी टाइम वेन योर वेसल इज नॉट एट एंकर और मेड फास्ट टू श्योर मीन्स आप मूड मूड नहीं है या आप एग्राउंड नहीं है तो उसका मतलब आप अंडर वे हैं अगर आप यू आर कटिंग अक्रॉस द वॉटर एट द सेम टाइम देन यू आर अंडर वे एंड मेकिंग वे सो दैट्स वॉट अंडर वे मीन्स अगर आपका जहाज ऐसे खड़ा हुआ भी है पर मूड नहीं है रस्सी से नहीं बांधा हुआ या एंकर नहीं करा हुआ या एग्राउंड नहीं है यू आर अंडर वे सो दैट्स वॉट अंडर वे मीन्स अगर आप ड्रिफ्ट कर रहे हैं तो भी आप अंडर वे हैं ओके okay. आज बहुत क्वेश्चन पूछे यार तो धो दिया तुम लोगों ने ओके okay. लड़कों ने पूरे रूल कोट कर दिए फटाफट ट्वेंटी और लेस सेवेंटी फाइव मीटर्स लेंथ वन नॉटिकल माइल हाँ मतलब मैक्सिमम इज टू नॉटिकल माइल्स बट इट कैन गो बियॉन्ड टू नॉटिकल माइल्स टू नॉटिकल माइल्स इज द नियरेस्ट हो सकता है आपको बड़ा वाला बहुपू दिया हो वो चार नॉटिकल माइल तक जाता हो प्लस साउंड वेव है तो इट ऑल डिपेंड्स ऑल्सो द मीडियम इट इज प्रोपरगेटिंग थ्रू अगर फॉग है हेजी है तो कम हो जाएगी सो so, बहुत वेरिएबल है बट मिनिमम रिक्वायर्ड इज टू नॉटिकल माइल्स फॉर दैट गिवन लेंथ ओके एनी अदर क्वेश्चन तरुण सर सेफ स्पीड इज नॉट डिफाइंड एनी वेयर इन आर वर यस सेफ स्पीड इज डिफाइंड द नंबर इज नॉट गिवन इट हेज इट इट इज डिफाइंड नॉट क्वांटिफाइड द आंसर इज सेफ स्पीड इज वेरी क्लियरली डिफाइंड so your statement is true say speed is defined in the rules of the road and very clearly defined but it is not quantified means the number is not given that what number is say speed okay ab main aapse puchu aap kitni speed pe scooter chalate hain so that all depends aap kahan chala rahe hain so that's why the say speed has been very clearly defined in, within the meaning of these rules but it has not been quantified within the meaning of these rules okay So, क्या स्पीड का नंबर है वो डिपेंड करेगा तभी तो इतने सारे इन्होंने पॉइंट्स दिए तभी तो मैंने आपको बोला वीडी मेक्स लिटिल विली ड्रॉप चीकी चाली ईट पुसी नो मोर या ओके युवराज आज तो लड़कों ने खूब क्वेश्चन पूछे हैं भाई पूरा कैन वी डायरेक्टली अप्लाई फॉर सेकंड मेट फ्रॉम इंडिया इवन इफ यू लव भाई सर कैन यू गिव डेफिनेशन ऑफ ओवरटेकिंग इन आर डेफिनेशन ऑफ ओवरटेकिंग नॉट एप्लीकेबल इन आर वी बिकॉज जो रूल नंबर थर्टीन है दैट इज इन लाइन ऑफ साइट इन लाइन इन इन लाइन ऑफ साइट होता है वेसल कैन सी ईच अदर विजुअली रूल नंबर नाइनटीन के केस में सेक्शन वन इज एप्लीकेबल रूल्स इन एनी कंडीशन ऑफ विजिबिलिटी सो द ओवरटेकिंग रूल नंबर थर्टीन इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल इन रूल नंबर नाइनटीन सो so, आप वो डेफिनेशन इसमें लगा ही नहीं सकते क्योंकि आपको साइड लाइट दिखेंगी नहीं आपको बेरिंग मिलेगी कैसे रिडार से मिलेगी ठीक है तो विजुअल बेरिंग तो आपको मिलने से रही एस्पेक्ट आपको दिखने से रहा एस्पेक्ट तो दिख जाएगा आपको अगर आप प्लॉट करेंगे तो बट आपको उसका ना तो लाइट्स दिखेंगी और दूसरी बात यह कि जो उसमें दिया हुआ है रूल में रूल क्लियरली स्टेट दैट सेक्शन सेक्शन वन रूल नाइनटीन अप्लाइज इन कंडीशन ऑफ रिड्यूस विजिबिलिटी एंड सेक्शन वन इज स्टिल एप्लीकेबल बिकॉज दैट इज अंडर एनी कंडीशन ऑफ विजिबिलिटी रूल नंबर थर्टीन कम्स इन अंडर द सेक्शन इन साइट ऑफ इच अदर सो रूल नंबर थर्टीन पर से इज बट इफ यू यूज ओवरटेकिंग वर्ड एज रिलेटिव वर्ड मीन्स इफ आई एम डूइंग मोर स्पीड देन यू देन ऑब्वियसली आई एम ओवरटेकिंग बट नॉट बाय द डेफिनेशन ऑफ रूल थर्टीन बट जस्ट रूल बट जस्ट द मीनिंग ऑफ 
ओवरटेकिंग विल अपलाई भाई इफ आई एम डूइंग मोर स्पीड देन यू देन द वर्ड इज ओवरटेकिंग बट दैट डजेंट मीन वॉट इज रिटर्न इन थर्टीन विल स्टिल बी एप्लीकेबल बिकॉज वो सिर्फ इन साइट ऑफ एप्लीकेबल होता है ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव इफ यू बिकॉज इन रेस्ट्रिक्टेड विजिबिलिटी एवरीबडी इज सपोज टू टेक एक्शन एंड दैट्स वाई रूल नंबर थर्टीन अदर देन द मीनिंग ओवरटेकिंग दैट यू आर मोर स्पीड डूइंग मोर स्पीड देन मी सो यू बिकम ओवरटेकिंग वैसल इज द ओनली सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द वर्ड ओवरटेकिंग बट इट डज नॉट मीन दैट वो ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव मोर देन ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव अब आउट द बींग वो सबका कोई मतलब नहीं है बिकॉज इन रिड्यूस विजिबिलिटी एवरीबडी इज सपोज टू टेक एक्शन यू आर ओवरटेकिंग मी यू आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू टेक एन एक्शन आई एम हेड ऑफ योर बीम सो यू आर गोइंग टू गो पोर्ट इन स्टार बोर्ड एंड अकॉर्डिंगली आई विल ऑल्सो गो पोर्ट इन स्टार बोर्ड डिपेंडिंग विद साइड ऑफ द बीम यू आर गोइंग टू ओवरटेक मी फ्रॉम ओके सो ओवरटेकिंग डज नॉट मेक यू और गिव्स यू एनी लेवरेज लाइक यू गेट सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ leverage if you are actually overtaking as per rule number 13 so remember rule number 13 is only applicable in sight of each other and not when you are given in a situation of reduced visibility only rule number 3 to rule number 10 is applicable which is under any condition of visibility rule number 19 is in condition of reduced visibility exactly don't use the word give way there is no give way or stand on stand on and give way word is only to be used when two power driven vessels are involved in a crossing situation other than that there is nothing like a give way nothing like a stand on okay both vessels are supposed to take action not give way give way and stand on word is only meant for crossing situations involving two power driven vessels not even a power driven vessel and a fishing vessel or a power driven vessel or a ram they are not give way and stand on in that case okay there's within the meaning of these rules so stand on and give way very clearly is applicable as per the crossing situation When two power driven vessels are involved, per se, ठीक है तो वो वर्ड्स आप नहीं यूज कर सकते टेक्निकली वैसे समझाने के लिए गिव वे यूज कर सकते हो जैसे हम यहाँ ओवरटेकिंग वर्ड का मीनिंग यूज कर रहे हैं वट इज कंस्टेंट बाय ड्राफ्ट वेसल विच बिकॉज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ ड्राफ्ट विद रिलेशन टू अवेलेबल डेप्थ एंड विथ ऑफ अवेलेबल डेप्थ एंड विथ ऑफ नेविगेबल वॉटर सच दैट इट सीवियरली कंस्टेंट द वेसल फ्रॉम द डेविएटिंग फ्रॉम डेविएटिंग फ्रॉम द कोर्स शी इज फॉलोइंग यस ले भाई डिफाइन कर दिया सीबीडी का डेफिनेशन अभी भी याद है मेरे को यस yes. इसी बात पे नीचे हार्ड बना दो सीबीडी का डेफिनेशन याद है कप्तान बनने के चार साल पांच साल बाद भी ये मैंने काफी अच्छे सो बेसिकली यू सिंग आर वी देर इज नो ओवरटेकिंग टर्म नो ओवरटेकिंग का मतलब सिर्फ ये सिग्निफाई करना है कि ये तुमसे ज्यादा तेज स्पीड कर रहा है बट उसका वो एप्लीकेशन नहीं है जो रूल थर्टीन में गिवन है दैट यू नो शी सपोज टू स्टे क्लियर एंड वेसल अदर वेसल शेल मेंटेन हर कोर्स एंड स्पीड वो सब नहीं है भाई बिकॉज वो सिर्फ तब होता है जब यू आर इन्वॉल्व इन लाइन ऑफ साइट हाउ मीन्स यू कैन सी इच अदर विजुअली हाउ वुड यू डिफाइन आर वी इन टर्म्स ऑफ नॉटिकल माइल्स इट डिपेंड्स ऑन योर कंपनी एस एम एस फ्यू कंपनीज दे से थ्री नॉटिकल माइल्स फ्यू से थ्री पॉइंट फाइव योर मास्टर कैन कम एंड से इन इन माई स्टैंडिंग ऑर्डर्स के नहीं मैं तो फोर नॉटिकल माइल्स मानूंगा सो देर इज नो अगेन क्वान्टिफाइड नंबर बट बाई इफ यू सी इंडस्ट्री प्रैक्टिस इट इज Anything more than 3.53 nautical miles, which is taken as reduced visibility, because three to three miles, काफी हो गया visually देखने के लिए और आजकल तो radars भी हैं that it still gives you ample time to take action, and plus the amount of formalities which are involved in compliance with Rule 19. So you don't want to come down to uh, standby engines for everything. अब थोड़ा सा भी कहूँगा कम कर फिर धंधा कैसे करोगे भाई इस कार्गो भी तो पहचाना है या सिर्फ rule ही follow करने हैं. Okay. If master is not on vessel, then we can say के vessel not under command नहीं भाई master नहीं है तो second in command तो है the 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 STCW also says that if master gets incapacitated, the person next in rank takes over his duty takes the command. So if second engineer is not if chief engineer is not there, second engineer will take over for that time even if he has no COC. What acting chief engineer बन जाएगा अगर master नहीं है तो chief officer promote हो जाएगा दोनों नहीं है तो second officer हो जाएगा वो नहीं है तो थर्ड ऑफिसर हो जाएगा और अगर थर्ड ऑफिसर भी नहीं है तो भाई इतने कोइंसिडेंसेस कहां से ला रहे हो तुम जहां से वो कोइंसिडेंसेस ला रहे हो मैं वहीं से नए नए ड्यूटी ऑफिसर्स दे आऊंगा तो मैं फोर्थ ऑफिसर बुला लूंगा फिर मैं जूनियर फोर्थ ऑफिसर बुला लूंगा फिर मैं फर्स्ट टाइम फोर्थ ऑफिसर बुला लूंगा तो द आइडिया इज इफ द मास्टर इज इनकेपेसिटेड नो यू आर नॉट नॉट अंडर कमांड डेफिनेटली नॉट देर इज स्टिल अ ड्यूटी ऑफिसर ऑन द ब्रिज वेरी वेल कैपेबल ऑफ कीपिंग इंडिपेंडेंट वॉचेस सर हाउ वी डिफाइन सेफ नेविगेशन इन क्रॉस डे टाइम लाइट हाउस एरिया भाई ये समझ में नहीं आया क्वेश्चन ही समझ में नहीं आया ऊपर से निकल गया 
in restricted visibility we have an in operational radar we hear fog horn with increasing intensity above the beam what will be the action bhai abhi to bataya tha increasing intensity se agar tumhare piche se aawaz aa rahi hai rule says you have to be you have to take action in you in case you cannot avoid a close quarter situation with a vessel forward of the beam or you hear fog uh, horn of a vessel uh, forward of the beam but if something is increasing in intensity above of your beam then less more than your concern you more than then in that case you will be a concern for the vessel which is approaching you because uske liye aap aage ho so in case you will not be doing anything because aap to usko identify nahi kar pa rahe ho no idhar hai idhar hai kidhar hai but because he is approaching you and the rule says forward of the beam if you hear a fog fog horn of a diff, of other vessel forward of your beam to usko bhi to tumhara fog horn sunai de raha hoga to ye action lega ye apni speed reduce karega ye kyun chala raha hai tumhari tarah क्योंकि तुम तो तुम्हें पता ही नहीं है ना एक लेफ्ट राइट किधर है तुम्हें फॉग हॉन सुनाई दे रहा है उसमें भी तुम आइडेंटिफाई नहीं कर पा रहे हो सो रूल सेस वेसल विच इज फॉर्ड ऑफ अ बीम द फॉग हॉन ऑफ अदर वेसल तो अगर इसको सुनाई दे रहा है तो ये एक्शन लेगा रिड्यूस स्पीड करेगा क्यों दौड़ता हुआ आएगा इट विल रिड्यूस अर स्पीड टू बेयर मिनिमम एट विच यू कैन मेंटेन अ कोर्स और इवन टेक ऑल अर वे ऑफ सो दैट्स द आंसर ये क्योंकि ये तुम्हारे पीछे है पर तुम तो इसके आगे हो जैसी ये जैसी ये तुम इसके आगे हो इसके ऊपर रूल नंबर नाइनटीन का फॉर्वर्ड ऑफ द बीम वाला पोर्शन ठुक गया ठीक है ना इसको एक्शन लेने की जरूरत है दैट्स हाउ यू विल एक्सप्लेन तुम भी ले सकते हो बट यू कैन नॉट डेटा माइन वेर एग्जैक्टली ही इज ओके आज तो बहुत क्वेश्चन हो गए सर नाइट टाइम में लाइट हाउस नेविगेशन में हेल्प करते ही देन हाउ इट वर्क इन डे टाइम भाई आपका क्वेश्चन नहीं समझ पा रहा मेरे दोस्त सर टेल मी समथिंग अबाउट रेट ऑफ टर्न भाई रेट ऑफ टर्न वही है जो नाम है रेट ऑफ टर्न दिखाता है आप कितनी तेज घूम रहे हैं आप कितनी तेज घूम रहे हैं अगर आप वन डिग्री पर मिनट मतलब आप एक डिग्री कोर्स चेंज करने में वन मिनट लेंगे टेन डिग्री रेट ऑफ टर्न अगर आ रहा है तो मीन्स यू विल टेक वन मिनट टू चेंज योर कोर्स बाई टेन डिग्रीज मीन्स इफ यू आर डूइंग थ्री जीरो 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 यू वॉन्ट टू कम टू थ्री वन जीरो इफ यू रेट ऑफ टर्न इज टेन डिग्रीज दैट मीन्स यू विल कम टू थ्री वन जीरो आफ्टर वन मिनट सो रेट ऑफ टर्न कितना होना चाहिए ज्यादा कम इट ऑल डिपेंड्स आप कितना तेज घुमाना चाह रहे हैं सो द आइडिया ऑफ रेट ऑफ टर्न इज टू टेल यू हाउ फास्ट यू आर टर्निंग एंड इफ यू आर टर्निंग टू फास्ट और टू स्लोली आपको एक नंबर मिल जाता है हाई पी एस गुड इवनिंग आपके बाल क्यों नहीं है इस सवाल का जवाब दोस्त मैं बहुत सालों से ढूंढ रहा हूँ सब प्लीज एक्सप्रेस बी टी आई एस हो आर ओ आर का लाइव है भाई <laughs> एटीएस भी घुमा ले एयर ट्रैफिक सर्विसेज भी बुला ले यहां पर भाई एग्जाम ले ले मेरा सीओसी ले ले मेरी वैसा नाइट टाइम में क्लियरिंग बियरिंग भी पूछ रहा कोई अब भाई नेविगेशन नहीं करा रहा आरओआर करा रहा हूं एट सी यूजिंग इंजन शुड बी आस्क ड्यूटी इंजीनियर और डायरेक्टली वी कैन यूज इंजन कीपिंग इन माइंड सम चीफ इंजीनियर डोंट लाइक दिस द ड्यूटी ऑफिसर इज ऑलवेज ऑथराइज बाय द कंपनी एस एम एस एंड ऑल्सो बाय द स्टैंडिंग इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द मास्टर दैट The engines are at his disposal, and but why will you use the engines? If you reduce visibility, then you are supposed to reduce the speed. So, you have time to call the engineer. But in case of an emergency where you cannot avoid the danger, and the only way to avoid the danger is by reducing the speed, then by all means you can reduce the speed or go stern. But remember, the moment you start reducing, stop the engine or go stern, your ability to turn is also gone. So, pulling the stick is available, but should you be pulling the stick that's the question which depends how far you are where exactly you are whether you are approaching a landmass you are going to run aground or there is something which has just shown up right ahead of you so in that condition of course the the safety of the vessel takes priority over the safety of the engine so yes duty officer officially if he is the sole if he is the person navigation in charge of navigational watch the in the main engines are at his disposal and the chief engineer the only reason he will not like it is because if you pull the put the stick off and if the situation is not grave enough and you have done it out of your inexperience rather then you will chances are that you will run into more trouble than actually coming out and bailing yourself out of the situation but if there is a condition where you in your judgment and your prudent just judgment you have decided to pull the sticks and that's your call as a duty officer isliye paisa milta hai to take that call whether to be or not to be isi ka paisa hai sir aapki pre sea training kahan se hai bhai pooch mat promote mat karwa usko okay dns ka exam class bhai dns means se related koi question ka answer mere paas nahi hai cast of and vessel drifting with currents underwear making bhai ye kaisa sawal hai 
कास्ट ऑफ कर दिया तूने डेफिनेशन पढ़ी मेरे भाई अंडर वे की अंडर वे इज वेन द वेसल इज नॉट मेड फास्ट टू श्योर और तू बोल रहा है कास्ट ऑफ हो गया कास्ट ऑफ हो गया तो मेड फास्ट कैसे हुआ एंड द मोमेंट यू आर नॉट मेड फास्ट दैट मीन्स यू आर अंडर वे ना द डेफिनेशन सेज इफ यू आर नॉट अंडर मेड फास्ट और एट एंकर और ए ग्राउंड द मोमेंट यू हैव कास्ट ऑफ टेल मी हाउ कम यू आर स्टिल यू कैन कॉल योर सेल्फ मेड फास्ट दैट मीन्स यू आर अंडर वे चाहे आप ड्रिफ्ट भी कर रहे हो ड्रिफ्ट में आपको ना तो आप एंकर पे ना आप ए ग्राउंड है ना आप मेड फास्ट है सो वॉट इज कन्फ्यूजिंग यू ऑफकोर्स यू आर अंडर वे एनी टाइम यू आर नॉट मेड फास्ट और एट एंकर और यू आर नॉट ए ग्राउंड यू आर अंडर वे दैट मीन्स इवन इफ यू आर ड्रिफ्टिंग इवन इफ यू आर स्टॉप्ड इवन इफ यू आर मूविंग यू आर स्टिल अंडर वे The only thing is that if you are moving, you becomes underway and making way. But you are always underway in case you are drifting. And if you are not, not dragging. Remember, ah, कल को ये मत बोलना कि सर आपने बोला था drifting. अगर drag कर रहा है, you are still at anchor. Your anchor is dragging. You are not underway. You are anchor dragging. You are dragging anchor. Okay. But अब वो rule में कहीं नहीं लिखा हुआ है, ठीक है ना? But you are, your status is still very much at anchor. Okay, because you still have your anchor down. Once your anchor is away, that's when you are underway. Officially, if your anchor is away. You are underway. If you have dropped anchor and the anchor has not brought up, you are still underway. You only switch on your anchor lights once the anchor holds. But if you have anchored the vessel and then it starts to drag, you are dragging anchor. You are not underway. You are still at anchor. But in that condition, आपको कुछ leverage मिल नहीं रहा अपने आपको anchor इस पे दिखा के. तो कोई ज़्यादा फर्क पड़ेगा नहीं. ठीक है? Okay. ओके टी एस एस कराते हैं अब नहीं कल नहीं करा पाऊंगा यार कल तो मंडे है कल से तो लग जाएगी कल से तो बिजी हो जाऊंगा ऑफिस में अब अगले वीकेंड पे कोशिश करेंगे सैटरडे संडे पर रूल टेन और नाइन डेफिनेटली अगले वीक कराने की कोशिश करूंगा सर वी हैव अ वेसल कंस्टेंट बाय ड्राफ्ट एंड वी हैव अ वेसल नॉट अंडर कमांड ऑन पोर्ट बाओ तू इस बात का आंसर खुद दे मेरे भाई वो नॉट अंडर कमांड है नॉट अंडर कमांड मतलब तू एक अंधे भैरे आदमी से कह रहा है तू मेरी आवाज सुन रहा है तुझे गाना पसंद आ रहा है अरे वो नॉट अंडर कमांड है तू रैम है रैम है तेरे पास इंजिन है और इंजिन नहीं है तो तेरे पास पोर्ट स्टार्ट होगा तू किस तरीके का रैम है हो सकता है तेरे पास डायवर डाउन है अंडर पर तू उस डायवर को ऊपर बुला सकता है अगर तू कुछ भी नहीं कर सकता तो कोलिजन हो ही जाएगा फिर तू कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ में जाएगा कि भाई रैम कहेगा ना मैं हिल सकता था ना मैं स्पीड कर सकता था एनयूसी कहेगा जी मैं तो पहली एग्जेप्टेड बाय द रूल हूं तो मैं क्या कर सकता था भाई एनयूसी का डेफिनेशन पढ़ वो बोलता है एग्जेप्टेड बाई दीज रूल्स इट कैन नॉट कम्प्लाई विद दीज रूल्स तो उसको तू पोर्ट क्वार्टर में रख स्टारबोर्ड क्वार्टर में रख ग्रीन लाइट दिखा ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव अब आउट दीम दिखा भाई वो रूल्स के हिसाब से मनुवर ही नहीं कर रहा वो नॉट अंडर कमांड है शी इज एग्जेप्टेड वो हाथी की सूंड है आ रहा है उससे बच जा भाग जा ठीक है एंड का ड्रैगिंग इज नॉट अंडर कमांड नो वाई यू आर नॉट अंडर कमांड यू हैव योर इंजिन यू हैव योर अडर यू कैन चेक योर 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 कंडीशन यू आर ड्रैगिंग बिकॉज your maybe your anchor is not holding or maybe the current is too strong or maybe you have not paid out enough cable everything is well within your control if your engines are, if your engines are not available and you start to drag you can still argue in the court of law that you are nuc in the court of law there is no argument which you can upheld that my anchor was dragging what makes you think you are not under command the un, not under command means you do not have the ability to maneuver either in terms of changing the course or speed and or or both If dragging anchor छाबरा पावरा का बुक यार मुझे पता नहीं मैंने पढ़ा नहीं बट डेफिनेटली नॉट पैट्स ऑन रीजन बिंग इफ यू स्टार्ट टू यूज एर इंजन एंड स्टार्ट टू कम एड ऑन द इंजन फुल एड टेल मी विल यू बी ड्रैगिंग एंकर यू स्टार्ट टू पिकअप एंकर अंटेन लेस अगेन द वेदर इज सो रफ सो दिस इज डिबेटेबल या देर इज फोर्स टेन एंड इलेवन एंड यू स्टार्ट टू ड्रैग एंकर बट देन अगेन द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ विल आर्ग्यू दैट वाई डिड यू नॉट पिकअप एंकर सो अगेन दिस इज अ कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ काइंड ऑफ एन आर्ग्यूमेंट यू कैन नॉट से दैट ड्रैगिंग एंकर इज Immediately quantify as NUC. नहीं भैया ड्रैगिंग एंकर आ रहे हैं एनयूसी एनयूसी किस ड्रैगिंग एंकर में तुमने एनयूसी लाइट आज तक किसी भी मास्टर को जलाते हुए देखा है अगेन इफ द विंड फोर्स हैज गॉन टू टेन इलेवन विंड फोर्स देन ऑफकोर्स यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू पिकअप यू विल कंटिन्यू टू ट्रैक यू कैन से कॉल योर सेल्फ एन एनयूसी बट अगेन द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ विल कम एन आस्क यू वाई डिड यू नॉट पिकअप द एंकर वेदर फोरकास्ट तो आ रहा था ऐसा कोई विंड अचानक से आ गया तू क्या कर रहा था एज अ मास्टर सो रहा था ब्रिज के ऊपर Why did you not get up, get your engine steady and started to pick up anchor and maneuver and get the fuck out of that situation? No, yeah. So and you see for that time being, you will see. But questions will still come back to you. So this is a very debatable thing. There is no hard and fast yes and no. But more often than not, if you are dragging in normal circumstances, which is very common, you are dragging because proper pay out, not done, anchor done, not done. या विंड बढ़ गई या वो अगर तो हाउ हाउ यू आर एन एन यू सी बट या अगर विंड इतनी बढ़ गई है कि इंजिन से कंट्रोल ही नहीं कर सकते देन ऑफ कोर्स एन यू सी जला लो बट उससे तुम्हें क्या फर्क पड़ रहा है यू विल स्टिल 
रन अग्राउंड एंड रन इन टू समन एल्स तो वो केस जाएगा कोर्ट में फिर कोर्ट डिसाइड करेगा कितनी लाइबिलिटी है किसने कितनी गलती करी किसने इंजिन रेडी नहीं करे सो वो बहुत डिबेटेबल टॉपिक है मेरे दोस्त स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड नहीं अच्छा ड्रैगन गंग करें न्यूज है न्यूज ऐसा नहीं है दैट्स नॉट डॉन्स ऑर्डनरी प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सीमेन यही जो ये कह रहा है कि एनयूसी आता हुआ देख रहा है कहता है कि भाई पर मैं तो रैम हूं गुड प्रैक्टिस तुम्हें दिख रहा है एनयूसी है वॉट इज गुड प्रैक्टिस यार हटो उसके रास्ते से दट इज गुड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सीमेनशिप कीपिंग अ गुड लुक आउट इज गुड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सीमेनशिप तुम्हें पता है कि रिड्यूस विजिबिलिटी है ओपनिंग द ब्रिज डोर्स इज अ गुड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सीमेनशिप प्लॉटिंग योर पोजिशन रेगुलरली इज गुड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सीमेनशिप यूजिंग योर रेडार इफेक्टिवली एडजस्टिंग द कीपिंग अ एक्स्ट्रा लुक आउट दीज आर ऑल प्रैक्टिस ऑफ गुड सीमेनशिप इफ यू नो हेड ऑन सिचुएशन है सामने वाले वेसल के स्टार बोर्ड साइड में कोई छोटा बोट है या कोई ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है यू ऑल्टर कोर्स टू स्टार बोर्ड और ऑल्टर मोर देन वॉट ही ऑल्टर्स इज अ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ गुड सीमेनशिप इफ द वेसल इज एक्जैक्टली एस ट्वेंटी टू एट इज एट ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव देन द ओवरटेकिंग वेसल एज्यूम दैट सी इज स्टिल ओवरटेकिंग एंड कीप्स क्लियर ऑफ यू इज अगेन अ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ गुड सीमेनशिप सो दीज आर ऑल प्रैक्टिस ऑफ गुड सीमेनशिप और बहुत एग्जांपल दे सकते हैं डंका लुकआउट रखना डिस्ट्रैक्ट ना होना अपनी बहुत अच्छे से कर लेना ऑल प्रैक्टिस ऑफ गुड सीमेनशिप इन्फॉर्मिंग द मास्टर वेल विद इन टाइम कि सर विजिबिलिटी इज रिड्यूसिंग इज प्रैक्टिस ऑफ गुड सीमेनशिप सो कॉमन सेंस से जो आप चीजें करेंगे वो गुड कॉमन गुड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सीमेनशिप ओके सर वाई डू सम शिप्स पुट देयर ए आई स्टेटस ऑन एन यू सी वाइल्ड ड्रिफ्टिंग एब्सोल्यूटली रॉन्ग एब्सोल्यूटली रॉन्ग दे आर चीटिंग एंड द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ विल कम हैविली ऑन यू इफ दे रियलाइज दैट यू हैव यूज एन यू सी वाइल यू आर अंडर वे एंड रिमेंबर द वर्ड अंडर वे नाउ यू कैन बी ड्रिफ्टिंग यू हैव यू योर क्वेश्चन इज दैट ही वॉज ड्रिफ्टिंग एंड यूजिंग एन यू सी बट यू हैव नॉट कॉल्ड द वेसल एंड आस्क मे बी हर इंजिन फेल्ड एंड हर रडर वॉज टक शी विल स्टिल बी ड्रिफ्टिंग बट शी इज एन एन यू सी so you need to know and first of all ascertain whether she is drifting but ha huh, underway hai drift kar raha hai engines are okay that you cannot make out you have to ask the vessel that bhai tu drift kis liye kar raha hai or the vessel has to inform you but a vessel can drift and still show any usual it usme kuch galat nahi hai if my engines are not there my radar is stuck if there is a fire on board and i am fighting that fire in engine room i am and you see i will be drifting who cares but if i am misusing the rule that I have my engines ready, and I know this practice. People do it more often that at night they will just, you know, start to drift, waiting for pilot or waiting for berth, and they will switch on the NUC light. It's absolutely in contravention to the rule of the roads. And if you are caught or if you are stuck in a situation, you will have very serious allegations as a master, and big liabilities coming your way. Sir, how to identify whether we have dropped the anchor because lots of cable present in sea? Hey, boy, this question doesn't make any sense. That anchor drop, it will show you. It will go down. It will go down. Whether she is brought up or not is a different question altogether. Chalo, बहुत लोग बाल आई हो गया. तीन घंटे का. छोटा सा लाइफ था. आपने क्वेश्चंस बहुत पूछे. बहुत इंटरैक्टिव बना के रखा सेशंस को. That's what something which I really enjoyed. Overall, this session was very interactive. You guys were asking excellent questions. especially the question which was uh, above the beam was a, i think was the pick of the night do logon ne pucha i really admire the fact how do you decide the speed of approach while anchoring well typically i'll tell you when you are about to anchor your speed should not be more than 0.3 knots why 90% your windlass pay out speed means at the speed at which the anchor can weigh uh, can can pay out is 0.3 especially if you are going to anchor under power okay you are going to walk back as they call it so if you are doing more than 0.3 knots what's going to happen if you are doing ahead or astern and especially astern your windlass is going to get overstressed with a lot of load and uska uh, motor damage ho sakta hai uski bearings damage ho sakti hai so ideally you should be dead stop when you start to pay out and once you start to pay out you can have very minimum stern way Less than 0.3 knots, so around 0.1, 0.2, so that the cable lays out on the seabed. If you are completely stop and you continue to pay out, वो सब एक के ऊपर एक गुच्छा बन जाएगा. When you start picking up the anchor, उसमें knot लग जाएगा. So you don't want to do that. So very minimum minimum stern way means less than 0.3. So typically 0.1, 0.2 knots का stern way रखे. And if it increases more than that, give a kick ahead on the engines, reduce it to 0.1, 0.2 again, and then slightly. nicely lay out the cable even if you are letting go have certain amount of uh, uh, stern way in that case you can have little more than 0.2 0.3 knots but remember 
very dangerous to have anything more than 0.2, 0.3 knots because the chances are that you will end up overstressing the cable. Riddhi Maa Ujha, you say a lot. Now I will say it because my life is running. The rest of the people can't say it. They will talk about it in the comments. What do I do? I am saying it. Okay, Gurleen, well said. Okay. Okay, Riddhi Maa Ujha. Okay, any more questions? Any more questions? Why oil holes are given large fillets in crank pins and journals? Bhai, I mean, I'm going to do it. You're always super worried. The marine, marine aid. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So one doubt, vessel at full, full, at sea, full dead ahead. Emergency generator also break down. What should be done? What the action to be taken? <laughs> Make the ship work. <laughs> Bhai, fix your generators. Because if your generators are not working, more your engines will not be working. So, अपने chief engineer को उठा, बोल भाई blackout हो गया, नीचे जा, man कर engine room. और क्या करेगा? वैसे तो वो तब तक भाग चुके होंगे बेचारे, alarm alarm बजेंगे सब. You can't go if you answer all of them. सही कह रहा है भाई, मुझे sir merit is missing you. भाई, I am also missing merit equally. Okay, with those thoughts, we'll wrap up the live today. And Hulk too. Yaar, ye kaun ladka hai? Yes, Bhardo Aji. Isko to mein pin karunga iska comment. Isne meri bike ka naam le diya, bhai. Pin vardi comment. Okay, with those thoughts, we'll wrap up the live today. Abhi meri ko sonne se pahle thodi si mails check karni hongi. 15-20 usme minit karab ho jayenge. Tab tak bad jayenge did. Subh uthna padega saadhe saath aad baje. Toh nii nahi hogi puri. Or sona hai hoard nahi ka sakte. Monday ko sab ko pata hai. Pahla din bhoat hi. Busy hota hai. Engineer section, man the engine room immediately and get the auxiliary engines online as soon as possible and identify the cause, reason, so on and so forth. Thank you. Yes. So with those thoughts, thanks a lot for keeping the live full of energy. Your questions were amazing. My skills were tested and at times challenged. And of course, at times, you have to take it away. But it was fun because when questions are good and questions are like this, which you can't give answers, so, it feels good because you go and learn something new and try to know it. I'll do it slowly. 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 So, it's fun when you ask questions about the answer. I'll go and learn something new. Then, I'll tell you next time. People say, let's learn something new. So, thanks a lot for all the questions. Good, bad. There are no bad questions. Only bad answers. So, if I can't answer your answer, or if you have any question, मिस हो गया तो देखो जतिन ने आंसर करा है इमरजेंसी जनरेटर विल कम ऑनलाइन इन 45 सेकंड्स इनफैक्ट उससे पहले ही आ जाएगा बट उसने बोला इमरजेंसी जनरेटर भी फेल हो गया है तो भाई क्यों फेल हो गया वैसे हो चुका है मेरे एक जांच पे मैं आपको इतना बता दूं हम्म तीनों जनरेटर्स एक एक करके गए बिकॉज फ्यूल क्वालिटी की वजह से और जो इमरजेंसी जनरेटर था वो मैनुअल पे पड़ा हुआ था तो वो ऑनलाइन ही नहीं आया तो एक्चुअली ऐसा हो चुका है इसलिए मैंने इस लड़के का क्वेश्चन तुरंत पकड़ा वो ऑनलाइन ही नहीं आया तो ब्लैकआउट हो गया मतलब इमेजिन एक ऑक्सीजन इंजन अगर आपका फील होता है द सेकंड इज सपोज टू टेक ऑन द लोड इफ द सेकंड विल नॉट वर्क द थर्ड वन विल टेक ऑन द लोड बट बिकॉज ऑफ द फ्यूल क्वालिटी द फर्स्ट वन ट्रिप्ट एंड द सेकंड वन ट्रिप्ट एंड द थर्ड वन नेवर केम ऑनलाइन एंड द इमरजेंसी जनरेटर वॉज लेफ्ट ऑन द मैन वो इट डिट हैपन ऑन माई शिप बट केम एज अ केस स्टडी सो हो सकता है बिल्कुल हो सकता है तो ईटीओ को पकड़ो यार वीकली ट्रायल्स आर इम्पोर्टेंट वीकली ट्रायल्स आर इम्पोर्टेंट वीकली ट्रायल्स का इसको ऑटो में डालना बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है क्योंकि ये छूटता है मैनुअल में इसलिए क्योंकि गए मैनुअल पे डाला ट्रायल्स करा और उसके बाद कोई ऑटो में डालना भूल गया भैया हो गया ऐसी स्प्रिंकलर सिस्टम में भी होता है वो ऑटो से मैनुअल में करा ट्रायल्स करा ऑटो में डालना भूल गया फिर लग गए तो चलो मजा बहुत आया एंड में बहुत अच्छे फनी कमेंट्स करे आप लोगों ने तो और अभी जब मैं फालतू की बीसी कर रहा हूं तो व्यूअरशिप बढ़ती जा रही है क्योंकि आप सबको चाहिए चटकारे और मसाला एंटरटेनमेंट जो कि मैं अब आपको अपने टाइम में नहीं देने वाला हूं निकलो यहां से सबके सब सारे जाके आर आर पढ़ लो थोड़ा टाइम पास कर लो सीओडी खेल लो जो डू वट यू वॉन्ट टू डू मैन डेढ़ घंटे की आपने पढ़ाई कर ली है यू हैव अ राइट टू गो एंड रिलैक्स मैं जाता हूं थोड़ी मेल भाजता हूं अपनी वापस जिंदगी पे लौटता हूं कल से जाएंगे ऑफिस सूट बूट की सरकार और बैक टू रूटीन लाइफ आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग वन वीक ऑफ क्रिसमस ब्रेक हालांकि ब्रेक तो नाम का ही था क्योंकि जहाज चल रहे थे तो मेल्स भी चल रही थी बट फायदा ही हो गया कि चलो रूम में बैठ के काम करने को मिल गया और कई बार शाम को इधर उधर घूमने को मिल गया थैंक्स अ लॉट फॉर ऑल द लव एंड सपोर्ट जो भी आपने दिया रील्स पे कॉमेंट्स पे बहुत अच्छे अच्छे कॉमेंट्स करके बहुत से बच्चों ने शेयर करी सो थैंक्स अ लॉट 
हमेशा मेरे पेज को दबा के प्यार मिलता है सभी से मिलता है कभी कभी थोड़ी बहुत टांगे भी तुम खींच लेते हो बट ठीक है ऑल पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ बीइंग ऑन सोशल मीडिया उससे बचा नहीं जा सकता देर इज नो वे कंटेंट इज ऑलवेज जस्ट बाय द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ द आई कई बार पसंद आएगा कई बार नहीं पसंद आएगा कई लोग ऐसे होते हैं जो नाराज होकर चले जाते हैं फिर वापस आ जाते हैं तो ठीक है दुनिया चलता रहता है दोस्त कभी ऊपर कभी नीचे अब जाएंगे मेल भाजेंगे और आप लोग करिए मजे स्टे सेफ जय हिंद and do whatever you want to do man but do not trouble your mother man and bharat mata man with those thoughts good night jai hind shubhratri shabha khair bye see you on the next